about the idea of having a lunch, you know, with all the women together. Is there possibly a necessity for it? But actually, it was fantastic because we got a little bit more space to do business together and also to hear from people who really know what they're doing. Um, and I suppose to share their experience is always value in that because, in fact, women have a lot in common. Um, and so it was very, very useful. So it was a good idea. It's very encouraging is always having role models. So the more that we highlight the role models, the more people are going to think it's normal. And whatever com becomes normal becomes a thing we aspire to. But um, I think that there's some really dynamic, amazing people. Because sometimes when it's unusual for somebody to enter an industry, it tends to attract people who are a little bit different. And so there's amazing women here, not just ordinary people in business. There are amazing people in technology. Uh, and I think to follow them as well. And of course, we can do that online. So if we spot somebody who we think is interesting as a role model, it's going to be so easy, easy to spot what they do and follow them. It's always very inspiring and more than that it's great fun to be in a room full of women. Um, I think it's slightly depressing that we're still having this conversation uh, 30, 40 years later that we're still kind of striving for equality and I think um, it's very interesting to think about the tech industry as being like any other in industry with a multitude of needs and it's not about developers and coders it's actually everything that a, a fully formed business needs to to thrive and survive and really the important part is kind of spreading that message and that's what i took from the lunch spreading the message that this is an industry of the present and of the future and women need to be part of it and get excited about it because it is one of the most energizing zones to be in and i think like anything, it's about stripping away the fear of, of, of going into something that you don't understand because if you understand what you're good at, you can apply that to tech. And just um, can I ask you as well, because uh, you, things are flying for you at the moment, tell me a little bit about where you're at at the moment now with Frock Advisor. Frock Advisor is uh, about to go to beta testing now. It's been quite a journey. Um, we've been supported by some amazing organizations, NDRC Launchpad, the Irish Times Fusion Program, which we were overall winners of, and now Wyra. Um, and, and all of them have been a really special kind of chronology to take us to where we are now, which is about to launch. We're now in a position where we're being approached by customers saying, when, please, can we sign up? That feels really, really good. It would be, be even better if we had a product to sell them. So for us now, the big push is to get that product market ready, to give it into the hands of the people who know they need it. Super. Well, the very best to look with it. Thank you so much. Oh, fantastic. I mean, listening to Padma from Cisco was outstanding. And I was just so delighted that this year we were talking about technology, not about the women part, but just technology and their experiences, um, particularly to the two girls in gaming. Uh, it was just brilliant. And it was, it was a really, it was a very broad discussion, everything from investment, um, the sector trends that are going on. It was, it was really, really good quality lunch. Brilliant. I think the key takeaway for me was people said stop talking about the barriers. You know, kind of, really in that sense of get on with it. There's a million and one reasons why we shouldn't do anything in life. But it was about not focusing on those and focusing on the things that we can do. And I think Katrina Hallahan spoke brilliantly from Microsoft at the start. You know, it was very much around the openness of the technology sector for people of all disciplines and not just engineering and not to be put off from it. And I think that was a very strong opening message as well beyond the, the people who were interviewed afterwards. Today was just fantastic. I mean, just to be networking. You know, everyone was um, separated this year, which was great, and so um, we got to meet different people from women from around the world in technology. Um, very inspirational. All the speakers were fantastic. Uh, so you come away with a lot of ideas. Network. You know, your network is expanding. So definitely be back next year. It's great. And tell us, you've had a lot of success lately. You were shortlisted yesterday for the uh, Spark of Genius Award, and you won the Cartier Award recently. Can you just tell me a little bit about that and what it meant to you? Uh, it was fantastic. It, it, you know, I would say to any female entrepreneur to go for the Cartier Awards. It's the Cartier Women's Initiative Awards and they're held, it's a global awards process, they're held annually. Um, so you, you do have to have a business with social impact. Um, a lot of technology companies are going forward now. So we were um, up against a great company from France and then one from Spain. So we were down to the last three in Europe and then so the process took place last week. Um, and we were judged on our business plan and then we had to do a presentation in front of a European jury. So, but, you know, just, I, I met such phenomenal women from around the world, just, you know, brilliant experience and very valuable and the network that it has given us, the visibility, the exposure, it's, and we also won, so we get 20,000 US dollars and a year's worth of mentoring as well, which helps, it's really good, it's excellent. It was incredibly impressive. I mean, there's a lot of tech conferences in the United States, a lot of women-focused events like this lunch as well, and I've been to many of them. Um, so 
I wasn't really sure what to expect because it's given a much smaller market. But it was extremely impressive. It was right up there. There was no difference in the quality. And I was very impressed by the global nature of the panel, particularly. It was a true international bunch of technology leaders. So it was, yeah, I mean, it's on a standard with anything I've been to in the U.S. I think some of it is about education. It's encouraging girls to be engineers. For example, it starts there in technology. And for example, at my company, the parent company of the Daily Beast is IAC. And we've had a, a program going all summer called Girls Who Can Code. So we're bringing in college students and high school graduates for the summer on an internship program to teach them how to code and to stop them being frightened of it and hopefully word of mouth and get more familiar with it. And there's a big push in the US right now to try and get more young women when they go to university to consider engineering and consider technology fields, which has typically been a, a male bias. Um, I thought it was great, it was really inspiring, some very interesting perspectives uh, on where tech is going, uh, not too much necessarily about the female side of things, which I actually really liked. It was more about technology, it was more about the future business. Yeah, I think we have to encourage all people into engineering and technology and science, not just women. But yeah, we need a lot of mentorship, a lot of support, and maybe, you know, a bit more of a proactive approach to the girls. Um, but we really need more great people in this sector. It was a, a great lunch, actually. Um, for once, it ran on time, which is fantastic. Um, I thought Padma was fantastic. Uh, Padma's the CTO of Cisco, and really, she's, she's some woman. I actually saw her on the main stage earlier at the Web Summit this morning, and I thought, wow, some, some superstar. Um, so I was delighted to see her here at the lunch, and she really is a rock of sense. So I really enjoyed her, and I enjoyed Diana and Rena as well, who are great, both running gaming companies, um, both with very different perspectives, but very, very interesting. Yeah, I um, certainly hugely in favour of encouraging women to pursue STEM subjects and at college to study you know, engineering and sciences. As an accountant, this is quite unusual for, for somebody to say, but, but not really. Um, I'm a, I suppose I'm an accountant, but an engineer at heart. And yeah, I would be encouraging lots more women to be doing engineering. But also, I was very positively encouraged by some of Padma's comments earlier, um, and some of the comments that were made by Katrina Hallinan of Microsoft at the lunch earlier on, that it's not just all about engineers and scientists. They also need people in professional services and project management and other advisory services to assist to run good tech businesses. So being an accountant, I was positively encouraged with that comment coming from Microsoft. Yeah, this is my second leaders lunch. I was here last year and I think it's always great to see so many incredibly talented, influential women in one room and of course had great conversations with them about all kinds of things like innovation around high heel shoes where you can clip off the heel and clip it back on and Nike technology and Rockport shoes and um, of course their business plans and uh, serial entrepreneurs. So fantastic, great to see what's going on in the entrepreneurial space as well as in the tech space. My only concern is that women are sidelined and I think that women have a responsibility to step up and to start volunteering themselves for conferences uh, like the Dublin Web Summit, uh, any conference really, and that goes all across every business industry. Um, I don't think it's acceptable that under 10% of women at conferences, tech conferences, um, we're actually often seeing all male conferences happening in, happening in Ireland on a regular basis, many of them government funded, and I think that because Irish women are 51% of the population that maybe we should be demanding a little bit more in terms of our representation at the highest levels of business and leadership. So a bit disappointed in that. Um, I think they're trying to make an effort, but I think there needs to be push and pull. I think conference organizers have to push harder to find women and women also need to be more active in putting themselves forward.